What's up, guys? This is John Hammond, looking at Pico CTF 2017, and we started to move into the binary exploitation category now that we finished up cryptography. Let's check out this challenge, 40 points, bash loop. It says, we found a program that's hiding a flag but requires you to guess the number it's thinking of. Chances are Linux has an easy way to try all the numbers and go to this location file system and try it out. Sweet. So we'll have to connect to this right with SSH or the web shell, get to the directory, and then we can do a Google search on bash loops, right? Because we want to do our own research, do our own self-learning. So let's fire up a terminal, get to Pico CTF, connect to our shell. Cool. Once we're in, we can move to that directory, and we have the files here, bash loop which is the program it looks like, and the flag, which we can't just go ahead and read. Uh, it has to be determined, read out by the bash loop program. So, all right, looks like if I run bash loop, it says, what number am I thinking of? It's between zero and 4,096. Okay, so I'm assuming we can pass it as an argument, right? Let's try leet, just because we're cool. Nope, that's wrong. Okay, so now would come the time for our own self-learning. So we can just Google whatever, bash loops, if we wanted to. And first result should be cool, should give us what we want. Um, it looks like it will let us loop through numbers in a set that we can just type out if we want, but I don't want to write out uh, 4,096 numbers there. That's stupid. Um, and that's like, okay, the, essentially the, the, the syntax or the semantics for actually writing stuff out. Um, heading a code block of commands that we want to run, etc. Okay, it looks like we are able to use this notation here with curly braces to count one to a certain number. So we can probably get that variable i and have that be between 0 and 4096 with just that syntax, right? Looks like it has a start and increment syntax in a later version of bash. Cool. So let's try that. Um, this is the syntax for when we're doing it in a script. So let's go ahead and create a script for it. Um, we'll have to put this in the temporary directory in our case, um, in the shell. But if we don't want to do that, uh, let's do it. So I can teachable moment. Um, let's create our directory for ourselves in the temporary directory. If you haven't seen the temporary directory before, it is your home in Linux when you are doing, um, uh, CTF game, we actually actually have access to a shell server um, because you can't have any write access in other folders, so you can create a home for yourself in the temporary directory. You won't be able to see anyone else's, um, but it's a good place for you to create files and work on your own. So I will now want to copy that location because we want to be able to keep track of that in our, in our command. So that's nano uh, our script dot s dot s h Put our shebang line in here, right? And for i in that syntax that we just found, 0 to 4096. Cool. And then do and done create the code block so we can indent in there. And we can just, let's echo out the value of i, right? So in bash, that dollar sign will give us the value of a variable. So we can just see that working through it. Let's see hmod plus x our script. Go ahead and run it, and it just runs through all of the numbers here. Perfect. Okay, so let's try and give that to the program, which now we need to specify by including the absolute path here, and then it's called bash loop, right, with an argument of that variable value, so the current count that we're on. Now I try and run this, our script. It says, whoa, no such file. I think it doesn't have an underscore, is that right? Yeah, it didn't have an underscore. My bad. All right, cool. So it's giving us output now. It says, nope, that's wrong. Pick a different number. So now we can use our grep skills that it even kind of hinted at here. You may need to use grep to filter out the responses as well. If you checked out the man page for grep, you also have an option, tack V, to invert the match. So return lines that don't have this specific pattern in there. So if we wanted to find lines that didn't have nope in them, we could just go ahead and change uh, our script after we run it. We can pipe that to grep tack v and ignore anything that has nope in it. So just like that, boom, we have our flag because only the only the confirm success line is printed out. So there's the flag. Let's take note of that. Make directory. Um, 
what do we want to do here? We want to just take note of this flag. So that's bash loop complete. And we can write a get flag script if we want to for this thing. But let's go ahead and submit this for one thing. Up 40 points. Heck yeah. Because we are using the shell in this thing, we can determine what that uh, number is that the program is actually looking for by changing our script to echo that out. Let's echo dollar sign $i. And let's not include a new line. So that's minus n for an argument for uh, echo. And then run that same command here. So actually give it to the program. But echo minus n will just display the number that we're looking at. So when we run our script, it should give us, okay, the number was 2,454. You can see it just right before they say yay. So if we wanted to run our shell script with that path, run bash loop with that number, it should connect to the service, cool, and then we can rev that, get the first column, rev it back, so we have just the flag, cool, and that can be our get shell script, or get flag script, sorry. Include our shebang line, take advantage of the shell script, make sure we have our connection, run that command all at once. And that's all it took to get the flag. Super cool, right? Because bash loops allow us to brute force. Because we're able to use a program or some computer skills and power and processing, we have automation. So we can just run through a crap ton of numbers and do really cool stuff. So that's awesome for brute forcing. Keep that in mind. Thanks, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Um, I want to give a special shout-out and some love to the people that support me on Patreon. I'm going to try and run through this list just to see if I can do it. I'm going to butcher everyone's name. I'm sorry. Uh, Spencer Clark, Gal Horowitz, Suzuki Attila, I'm sorry. Orgolot, The Unruly Destroyer of Worlds, Bastion of Terror, Jan Grob, Timothy County, Jacob H, R1FL, not rolling on floor laughing, but rolling one floor laughing. <laughs> uh, Thomas Rogdakis, JT Tun, Morris, uh, Maurice, sorry, Kontorowitz. I was worried about the last name. I was stressing myself out. Ben Squeeney, William Whitcomb, Justin Mann, and Kimbo. You guys are phenomenal. Thank you so much for your help and support and donations. Uh, One dollar on Patreon gives you an extra shout out just like this at the end of every video. Um, Five dollar a month on Patreon will give you early access to everything that I create, put on YouTube, and uh, that's it. <laughs> I don't have any other cool incentives until you give me ideas. So uh, I will make something cool eventually. I promise. I hope. I'm a sellout. If you do like this video, please do like the video. Uh, maybe leave me a comment, maybe subscribe, and if you're willing to, check me out on Patreon. And my new website, www.johnhammond.org. See you soon.